Hi everyone, welcome to AP Networks. My name is Andre and today I want to show you my Linux setup on my main machine. So here you have my Linux setup that I have running on my main machine. My main machine is actually running an AMD CPU and an AMD GPU. So as you can see here, I'm running the AMD Ryzen uh, 5950X. Uh, and I'm also using the AMD uh, ATI Radeon RX uh, 6900 XT actually. So I know here you see kind of 68 and 69, but it is actually a 6900 XT. Uh, I believe uh, you, can actually, you can also validate this within, or you can also see this within actually uh, the settings for uh, my GNOME environment, so the settings up within uh, GNOME environment. So as you can see here, I'm basically running Endeavor OS. Uh, I'm leveraging GNOME as my desktop environment. Uh, I am using an Asus motherboard as well. I do have 32 gigs of RAM, uh, and I have about two and a half terabytes of capacity. Uh, this capacity is essentially a combination of a couple of hard drives that I have uh, configured in my environment. I'm gonna show you here real quick. Uh, I do have essentially four disks in my system. Uh, I do use uh, two of these drives for Windows. As you can see here, I'm using, uh, so this is actually my, uh, my Windows uh, install uh, that's running here. Uh, you can kind of see the NTFS permissions or uh, NTFS partition, sorry, uh, as well as a disk or one terabyte disk that I use for games. Again, this is within Windows. And I do the exact same thing uh, within Linux where I have a dedicated disk for the OS that is an SSD of about 240 gigs, as well as a one terabyte disk that I use for various different things, such as for example, storing my virtual machines uh, when I'm doing various different testing uh, or even gaming, because I do also game on Linux. And it's something that I plan, or it's a video that I plan to do uh, at a later point uh, once I have a bit more uh, time. Uh, but for the time being, uh, I, you know, you saw that I have an AMD CPU with an AMD GPU. Uh, I used to have an RTX 2080 Ti GPU in the system and an Intel CPU. Uh, and I recently uh, decided to do a refresh and I ended up opting for the AMD uh, CPU and GPU for basically two main reasons. Uh, the first reason is that I wanted to have an AMD GPU because I didn't want to have to install the proprietary NVIDIA drivers in the Linux. Uh, and I also uh, you know, wanted to have um, uh, a better GPU than what I currently have. Now I had, or I should say what I currently had. Now I did have an AMD, uh, NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti, which is a pretty powerful GPU, uh, but I felt like upgrading to a uh, 6900 XT because one, I got it at a good price, uh, and second, uh, you know, I wanted to have a bit of an upgrade since I am running uh, a white screen monitor. Uh, this is this screen right here is actually a 4K screen that I have set to uh, 1920 by 1080 for the sake of recording the video, but I do have a 4K monitor and a white screen monitor uh, that is able to take advantage of this GPU when I'm playing games. Now, most, now, a good chunk of my games are in Windows just simply because they do not run well in Linux due to things like easy anti-cheat. However, any games that I do try to get working in Linux, uh, and I do get working on this with the use of either Proton or Wine, uh, I typically try and stick to Linux if the game you know, runs pretty well, right? So pretty much Windows I use as a last resort if I really have no other option, whereas Linux is really kind of like my main uh, setup, uh, as you see here. Now, uh, another uh, element that I wanted to show you to my setup was obviously this theme that I'm using. So as you can see uh, from my shell, uh, I'm using a, a different uh, theme than the one that comes, uh, you know, bundled with the GNOME environment, which I believe is the other way, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's this theme here. Uh, what I'm actually using myself is for the theme, I'm actually using the Flat Remix GTK theme, and there's different uh, color combinations that you can use. I'm using the same uh, theme for icons. And you can see here I'm using a known terminal. Uh, and you can kind of see my monitors that I have here. Now I have three monitors. Usually my white screen is my main monitor. And then these two monitors are 4K. Just at the moment I'm having them set to 2560 by 1440 and 1920 by 1080, as I mentioned prior, because uh, I'm essentially using, uh, well, I'm essentially recording with OBS. So uh, having a 1920 by 1080 resolution makes it easier uh, on the screen. Uh, you can also see the number of packages that I have installed. I always try to keep it at a minimum, but this is Endeavor OS running the latest uh, kernel at the moment. Uh, and I do have about 32 gigs of memory in my, in my, in my system or my, uh, my computer. 
Uh, and I'm also using, uh, for my terminal, I'm using something like um, uh, Power Level 10K to customize the, uh, the way that the, you know, the, the prompt looks like. Uh, I'm also using various different um, uh, plugins to be able to kind of output a lot of this content or a lot of this, this information here uh, using different colors, right? So it makes it easier to read, makes it easier to troubleshoot. So if I'm, for example, troubleshooting something like, um, or if I just say I wanted to view something like my uh, Z shell uh, configuration, I can just do something like this. And you can kind of see that with the cat command, I'm able to color code uh, pretty much, or it's color coded pretty much uh, all the commands that are running here and makes this a lot easier uh, for when I'm essentially, you know, going through other the configurations or doing any types of uh, settings, I can kind of see that, you know, the color, the color coding makes things a lot easier, if you will, as well as if you're, you know, using something like Visual Studio. Uh, Visual Studio has a very similar option for when you're downloading uh, various different um, extensions in order to support various different programming languages or scripting languages, if you will. So if we look at my tweaks configuration, you can kind of see that for the applications, like I mentioned before, it's GTK Blue. Uh, for the cursor, I'm using the Oreo red cursors. You can download these from uh, the GNOME uh, Looks website, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we can kind of look at it here and see, I'm gonna show you what I'm using. So if I go to GNOME, oops, I photo spelled it right. So let's go to GNOME Looks and if you look under cursors and you look under the rating, I'm using these Oreo cursors. And so for these Oreo cursors, you're able to pretty much use any of the different uh, combinations. I just opted for the, the red version, but you obviously have the different uh, uh, different versions of, of Oreo uh, cursor that you can use as well. Uh, I also modify the shell. I like to have my shell kind of match what my applications look like. So this is where I used my or I use the flat remix uh, dark uh, flat remix blue dark uh, panel theme, and then everything else I kind of left that stock. Uh, same thing for the the fonts. Uh, <clears throat> the top bar uh, I've added things like or configured things like the date, the seconds, the weekday I wanted it all to show in the top calendar week, uh, and then I've added things like minimize and maximize buttons here uh, so that uh, it's easier to kind of work with. It's similar to Windows if you're coming from a Windows uh, background as well. Uh, my next setup, or my next uh, my next tool that I use quite often with uh, GNOME is the uh, extensions uh, uh, feature, right? So this is pretty much very common uh, for a lot of uh, users because if you're using uh, GNOME, you know, and you want to use some of the extensions, you're going to install this extensions app separately, and then you're going to be able to control and configure the various different extensions that you see that I have configured over here myself. Now, these are obviously not my extensions that I've deployed. My, I've deployed these myself, but these are, this is not what I, this is not me who made these extensions. These are obviously extensions that are available for everybody to use uh, through the GNOME extensions uh, website. So if you're, if you're new to uh, GNOME and you've never used it before, what you can actually do is you can go to uh, GNOME extensions and you can actually see uh, all the different uh, GNOME extensions that are available uh, to you to, for you to use, right? And if you look at, you know, my install extensions, this is the same extensions that I previously showed you uh, earlier uh, in my uh, configuration here. Uh, one, now, one of my favorite extensions to use here is actually the tiling assistant. Now, what the tiling assistant allows me to do is it allows me to tile my windows in a much more efficient manner. So if you've used Linux, you're probably familiar with um, you know, things like window managers, for example. Now, window manager or tiling window managers are basically uh, uh, a way of leveraging uh, these these packages, or the way I should say, a way of uh, more efficiently uh, being able to kind of place your windows on your desktop in order to not waste any of the space on your desktop, uh, if you will. So, what I can do is I can deploy another um, another kind of browser and I can kind of put them side by side. You can kind of see the separation that I have in between to make it kind of look a little better. Uh, this is some of the things that you can customize within the uh, tiling uh, extension that you have configured uh, within uh, uh, GNOME itself. Now, another extension I really like to use is this workspace 
um, indicator slash quick switcher uh, extension, if you will. Uh, this is because when you're working with workspaces, uh, what's important to understand is that sometimes you're gonna have, let's say, a window open, right, on one screen, and you might wanna move that window over to another screen, right? And sometimes you don't really know where those windows are, or you don't, sometimes you don't really know what you have deployed on what workspace. So sometimes it's just easier to have the visible, you know, or the visibility to see, you know, where these windows are deployed so I can easily click and see, okay, so I see that I have something running here and I can see that in these three workspaces here that I don't have anything available or anything running at this moment. So it gives me kind of an indicator as to how easy it is for me to switch from like, you know, one workspace to another. Now, another extension that I think is really cool, uh, and for me that I use this very often is Vitals. And Vitals is basically one of my favorite extensions because Vitals allows me uh, to essentially see uh, everything that my computer pretty much has, uh, you know, configured in terms of hardware, right? So I'm able to see things like CPU utilization. I'm able to see things like um, uh, memory utilization. I can see things like the voltages that are currently applied to both my GPU and my CPU. Uh, I can see the uh, the monitors, uh, sorry, the the fans uh, in terms of how fast they're spinning. Uh, I can see things like you know the battery uh, usage. If I'm using a laptop, in my case, I'm using a desktop, so I don't really need this feature. I can see the storage utilization. So this allows you to easily, at a glance, pretty much look at every your entire system and be able to pretty much display that information in the top right corner uh, of your screen if you wanted to kind of e easily have the ability to glance at it while you're working. Uh, what, you know, while you're working within your apps or while you're browsing without having the need to, you know, open up a terminal and then, you know, um, run various commands to be able to see that same information. So having this information at the top is actually quite uh, helpful. Now, another extension that I like to use uh, is the uh, extension that allows you to essentially color, uh, color these uh, icons or color the kind of like the apps that are open in the top panel, as you see here. So right now you're kind of seeing it's kind of showing you the Edge logo, right? But if I were to actually turn off this extension, and I believe it is called uh, Colored Application Menu. So if I were to turn this off, you can kind of see that the extension goes back to kind of like a generic theme. It doesn't look very nice, I find. Uh, so if I, can, if I enable this, you can kind of see it mimics the actual icon that is down here. So you can kind of see uh, exactly which application you have open uh, and it makes things you know a, a little bit easier to spot if you will if you have you know uh, I mean to be honest with you it doesn't really matter at the end of the day it's more of an aesthetic thing it's not like if you have multiple applications open it's going to show multiple extensions here it is just one single extension so the minute I switch to my terminal it's going to switch to the terminal if I switch to my extensions I switch to my extensions so this is just a way to add a little bit of extra uh, you know I guess make it look a little nicer if you will now another extension that I really like to use is my or the blur my shell extension which essentially what it allows you to do is it allows you to blur this background here uh, to make it look a lot more fluid and blend in a lot more if you're using the you know the window key if you will or the meta key to um, uh, the window key I should say to um, access various applications as, as the ones that you see here so if I were to for example turn this off what ends up happening is you kind of see like this gray background. It doesn't look very nice. I'm not a big fan of the way this menu uh, looks here. So I've always kind of liked to use Blur My Shell because what it allows me to do is it allows me to blend this in. Looks a lot looks a lot better. Uh, blends in a lot much better with the uh, with the wallpaper that I currently have. And also if I'm doing something like something like you know looking through the applications, it kind of blurs the background. It makes it look really really nice, um, and it makes things a lot better uh, on the eyes if you ask me. Now I'm a big fan of dark themes. This is the reason why I went with dark themes. So if you leave, even if you look at my kind of like the way I use my Nautilus here, which is my file explorer, if you will, um, I like to have it all dark, uh, blue icons. Uh, it's easy on your eyes. It's easy to see. I can easily navigate, go through different uh, folders, and uh, it makes the experience a lot more pleasant uh, to use. Uh, 